Academic Football Students of the Week, Chaz Waters, Hank Zelinkas. Chaz Waters, Ethnic Studies, Hank Zelinkas, Exploratory Studies. Guys did a great job. I like to just commend them on there. Just chase for greatness on and off the field. Wonderful. I love to hear it. Also, a couple of my players came to me this past weekend and wanted to do something for single mothers. I thought that was so darn wonderful because there's a period of time in my life where my mother was a single parent, and uh, I just got love for that. So I told them anything they want to do, I'm all in. And that was uh, tremendous. That's the kind of character our young men have. Uh, great game. We, As you know, we didn't play our best football. We didn't put our best foot forward. But we uh, took care of all of uh, protocol and watching film, cleaned it up, ready to go into this week. Great challenge ahead of us. First and foremost, I have the utmost respect and love and appreciation for the head coach. This is a bona fide winner, not just a winner, a man who has put a plethora of young men into college and uh, they care about the character of the men. And I've been watching his journey because I was living in Texas for a while. So I'm a, you know, Barry Switzer is one of my great guys. So just watching his climb from there and what he did for that program, and then going out to uh, California, what he's doing for USC is commendable. I got love, respect, and appreciation for everything that he's accomplished. He is one of the, the upper tier coaches, and I, uh, I admire him tremendously and his staff. Let's go. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, Coach Ryan. Go ahead. What's going on, boss? Not much. How you doing? Excellent. Uh, a lot of times in a game like you had on Saturday, you can learn a lot about your team when you yeah. watch the film. Did anyone really stand out to you positively in terms of playing until the um, zeros were on the clock? Uh, quite a few of them did. Uh, I don't think we really had anybody who just shut it down and quit. The, the effort might have not been 100% or 10, 110% like we require, but I don't think any of them shut it down. And I'm, I'm proud of them. You got to understand that uh, um, for some people, they have a disdain for what we are and what transpired. To be three and one and not satisfied, don't they say a lot about this program? You're three and one and you're not satisfied and you know you can do better. So I'm happy with that understanding and that change of the thought process of this program. And I love where we're headed. Go ahead, Nikki. Hi, Coach. Nikki Edwards, CU Sports Report. How are you? How are you doing? Good. I uh, saw in a recent well-off um, video that Shiloh was a bit banged up after yeah. the game. How is he doing? He's doing better. We went to the hospital right after we landed. Uh, he's doing much better. We're praying that he he's, he heals and he's he's playing this weekend. He's a viable part of our secondary and our team uh, defensively. He's one of the voices on the defense, and uh, he plays with a certain physicality that we desire and we want. And uh, he's giving me daily updates, trust me. And I'm praying that he can play as a father as well as a coach. Hi, Coach Adam, Mr. Tiger, 24-7. Sports. How you doing, sir? How did Alton McCaskill's body hold up getting some of those reps, and what's kind of your plan for him going Alton forward? is, is uh, first of all, one of the best character young men that, that I've ever come to know. Uh, wonderful family. Mother has done a wonderful job with him as well as his siblings. He's, he's getting better and better. We want to see him hit it. A little more physicality, get the shoulders over a little bit. But as you can see, he has it. He just has to put it together in uh, due time, but he will. I don't doubt him for nothing. He's a great he's a, a great running back, but we have a, a backfield full of guys that can get the job done, but he's special. Okay. Hey, Coach, uh, Pat Rams, this year for us. I guess uh, when you put on tape of uh, Caleb Williams, what stands out to him? Everything. Uh, everything. The kid is a playmaker. Um, deserves the Heisman Trophy um, a year ago, which he – Secured. I love to see his personality on commercials and, and on pressers. Um, he's the epitome of class and confidence in what he brings to the table. He makes plays. He makes that team go. He is uh, he's a handful. Coach Chris Camarani with the Athletic. How's it going? Yes. Uh, as a head coach, when your quarterback gets hit, what are the emotions and frustrations like when the quarterback also happens to be? Well, it's my son too. You know that, right? Yeah, that's, that's uh, what are the emotions? I'm just messing with you. I don't have emotions as a father when I'm out there. I'm, I'm as emotions as just a coach. Um, you don't want your quarterback to get touched. But the fact that he we're giving up pressures, not only pressures, but sacks, um, it's a sometimes he hold it, waiting for guys to clear, waiting for guys to open. 
sometimes uh, there's nobody open. So it is what it is. We got to fix it. You don't want that because you want him to endure throughout the season because when he's doing his thing, we do our thing. Uh, the great note, you always got to flip it to the positive side. Giving up the sacks we've given up. Uh, the kid is still, what, 77% completion, completion percentage and over 70% last week or something like that. You know how phenomenal that is? So you got to look at things positively as well. That's phenomenal considering what we've given up uh, sack-wise and pressures. That means he's he's still, when he gets it off, he's doing his job, which is uh, tremendous. We just got to do a better job in protecting him and getting the ball out of there. Hey, Coach. How are you Jack doing, sir? Carlo. Good, how are you? Um, Jack Carlo with Buffalo's Wire. Um, it's only been a couple of days, but have you kind of seen your leaders respond to the adversity that you guys have? Um, I, I want to see the coaches respond first. That's the thing. I know the leaders are a lot, but I want to see how the coaches respond first. And the coaches, they have been responding. They've taken it on upon themselves as making the necessary changes, um, scheming uh, a little differently because you got to understand they have four game, four games of film on us right now to really predicate what we're going to do and where we are. We had a tremendous uh, scout report today that was tremendous that opened a lot of eyes. I think the, the theme of the scout report. Uh, what was it? What was the scripture? The truth no, the will truth set, you set you free. Yeah, yeah. The truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. And we wanted to really give them the truth about some matters that's going on around here. So prayerfully, they'll be free to do what they're capable of doing. Tremendous stuff. Coach, Matt Steph, 104.3 The Fan. You talked about, after the game the other day, yes, accountability, sir. right, with the yes, staff. Sir. And you just alluded to it. For you, what is that evaluation process like? I mean, it's easy to cut on the film and watch the players, but how do you evaluate a staff? Being uh, prepared. It should be maybe a couple surprises throughout a game, but there shouldn't be a multitude of surprises. We should know, okay, they're going to do this because when pressure's on people, they resort back to what they normally know. So we should know up on third down when they want us in pressure where this is coming from. We should know understanding uh, on this formation, they're going to run the ball. We should know what's coming. It's not a bunch of surprises in football. It just comes down to can your team execute much better than they can, and they executed much better than we could. So it's not a bunch of surprises, but now you got to adapt and adjust and make sure that we're forward thinking and not reacting. I hate being reactive. I like to be proactive. In that vein, do you believe your offense is too one-dimensional right now? I don't know about one-dimensional. Um, we got to run the ball. We got to run the ball. Not only that, we got to implement short and immediate as well as a deep passing game as well. But the main thing, you got to protect your quarterback. I don't care who you are, you got to protect your quarterback. Coach Sean. Coach Sean here with the Denver Post. You mentioned last week that Cormani seeing the field was up to Cormani. Uh, I wonder if you could elaborate on what you want to see him do, one. And two, did he help his case? Study, late, prepare. Late, late Study, late. prepare. Be on time for meetings. Show up to the darn meetings. Understand what we're doing as a scheme. Want to play this game. Desire to play this game. Desire to be the best in this game. At practice, in the film room, uh, and on your own, free time. You do know that I check film time for each player upon the week. Thursday, I need film time from the whole staff so I can see who's been preparing. And that's just not about commodity. It's about a multitude of them. So if I don't see that, that it, you would be a fool to put somebody out there and they're unprepared. Can't do it. Won't do it. Can't do it. I'm old school. I'm sorry. Did, did Oregon help in that regard? Did you got out there late? Did, what you what saw a score. Him? Shoot. I started to put you out there at one point. Is he that Broncos game? Or we like, uh, leave, hey, hey, leave my guy alone. Leave my guy alone. I love the Broncos. You know I love their coach. And Sean Payton's my guy. He's going to get it right. I promise you that. I believe in Sean Payton. Hey, Coach. Brian Howell. How are you doing, doing, sir? Just kind of going off Matt's question here, but do you feel like you guys need to be a bit more committed to, the, to establishing the run game than you have been at this point with the backs you guys have? That's just like asking your wife, are you committed to a good meal every night and she can't cook? <laughs> we got to be able to cook the meal, right? Before we can commit to it. Okay. We got to be able to cook the running games before we commit to it. 
Right. That was good. That actually was a good one. <laughs> that was spontaneous too. Coach, I'm Ali Stephen from the Associated Press. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Excellent. Um, uh, I know the women's. This is a little bit off topic, but the women's basketball team starts practice today, and I'm wondering what it's like for you to watch Aussie on the hardwood after you, yeah. know, you watch your, your boys on on the good iron. Man, I'm, you gotta understand, my baby girl is my heart. That's uh, I love all my kids, but I love them differently, as I always say. Bossy is, is my baby girl. She's my heart. Um, she has a witness protection program with her brothers. They, she'll never date. She, she probably won't get married until she's about 40. <laughs> they don't play. But that's, that's my baby. And just seeing her compete and seeing her go out there and want it and, and work and sit in there and put up 100 shots at the end of practice and on her own because they, they could go in the gym anytime they want. That's a tremendous, we have a tremendous head from his basketball coach, which I adore. And I told her, any recruiting help you need, and you've got me. And uh, they take me up on that, and I love it when they bring the young women in that's going to advance their program. But seeing my daughter just in a darn uniform, you have no idea. I, I, I don't, even though we got, we got an L, I don't consider it a loss when I get to watch my sons um, not only play on the field, I get to watch my son film everything and edit it and put it out and, and make people insecure around the country about their, their staff. Uh, then I get to see my daughter, you know, come in my office and take a nap on the couch and, and do on that shower up and put on all my clothes and steal them. I, I get to see all of that. So I, I'm, I'm living a wonderful double life here as a father and a coach. And I, I love every minute of it. It was a great question. Thank you, man. You brightened my day up. Appreciate it. Women's basketball first practice today. Well, what time? Available. What time is it? Media availability at 12.30, so we've got all over there. Is it 12.30? The media availability is 12.30 practice. I'm what's time? Practice, practice, practice is 2 o'clock. i got to go check it out. She don't want me to come to practice, though. She never wants me to come. Hey, Coach. Uh, Tyler King with the Denver Gazette. That's the uh, dogs and coffee shirt. I like that, my man. <laughs> I appreciate that. Essentials. Amen. I'm um, sticking with the, the parental aspect. Uh, th this weekend, you guys will be playing Jerry Rice's son, Brendan, on the other side. Uh, I'm just curious what that's like for you as your kids get to go. Yeah, I could care kids. less. I could care less. I don't give a darn about that. I care about all my kids, man. All my kids that have on a Colorado Buffalo uniform. That's what I care about. I, I can I could care less. I care about uh, uh, Mr. Williams, you know, Caleb Williams, <laughs> and that whole host of young men that's coming. Um, I'm, I'm happy for Jerry that his son is doing uh, his thing. I saw T.O. post about his son who scored a touchdown last week. And I'm happy with any father, man, that's there in their kid's life and doing a, a wonderful thing. I really am. I'm, I'm into fatherhood. I really am. All right, I'll go ahead. I really appreciate back here. Um, so, Keyshawn Johnson went on and said that there are may have been some coaches who – release some information about your team to Oregon. That's, that's was, ordinary. Was that, was that something that maybe you were alluding to after the game? No, no, no. That teams are trying to beat you. And no, no. I was alluding to what I said. I was honest about what I said. Uh, no, that happens every week. That's not just uh, from an Oregon game. That's that's life. And uh, I want our coaches to understand that we're not just playing against a team. We're playing against all of college football. It ain't too many people lined up to see us dominant to see us win. And they got to understand that as a whole and our entire staff has to understand you're not just participating against that per se school. We call for information as well. So this is not a one uh, stop type of thing, but uh, I know Keisha and alluded to the gentleman saying that they have a plethora of calls trying to assist, which is understandable. <laughs> Ain't no, that, that, that don't make it no tougher, no, no easier. We understand that's what we're up against. Do you mind if I ask an unrelated question? We'll have to yes. Back. Uh, Haley Van Voorhees, she's a player for um, for a D3 university. She was the first female who's a non-kicker to get on the field this past week wow. as, as a safety. Um, I just want to know what your thoughts were about a, about a woman non-kicker getting on the field and actually making a play. She got a, she got a quarterback run. Awesome. I'm all for it. I'm, I'm happy for her. Um, first of all, I, I'm concerned about her safety. I want to make sure she's safe, but I'm sure if she put on the pad, she understands what goes along with that. But, uh, you know, I believe in equality, not just of ethnicity, but gender as well. So I'm all for it. God bless her. Hey, Coach. Patrick Dawson, Scobo Sports. Um, I was just uh, throughout the game, you guys have been very aligned, throughout the season, excuse me, you guys have been very aligned on 10 11 personnel. And even in 11, you split Mike Yeah, wide a lot in the slot. So, even with the issues with 
quarterback protection, guys are <coughs> running more 21, 12 personnel, keeping an extra down. You get a little technical, man. Just what, what you try to say? You, get, <laughs> you guys tried to keep, uh, thought about keeping more guys in the backfield or on the line. So you yeah, keep more guys in the backfield, then you got three guys to go out for a pass, you got two guys to go out for a pass, and uh, it's easy to double them. Um, you know, everybody goes with tendencies. We just got to win. When we're out there, regardless of what personality, we got a receiver out there, he has to win his matchup. He has to win his battle. And we just got to call things a little more understanding of the coverages as well. But we will get to that. We'll do it. All right, last one. Go ahead. I think we're pretty. We're still pretty good ranking-wise uh, amongst the college football. I'm, I'm, I know we're 3-1, and one, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of schools out there would love to trade places. Uh, Ryan, you, the East fan, you know, First time I saw you was a close and death valley back in the day. Yeah. You, you, people were booing you. Your whole life, you've been divisive. You've yeah. Been when I came out the womb, I was booing. Right. Or they really don't, right? <laughs> yeah. So, and a lot of those adults have been very vocal this week. How? What's your message to them? And, and what do you tell your I don't audience? have a message to detractors or haters. I don't have a message. I don't take my time to respond and to defend myself. Why would I do that? I'm, I'm giving you a microphone if I'm doing that. I'm giving you solace that you're in my life. I don't care. I really don't. So it's, if it's been that way all my life, you would think that I'm used to it. I'm, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. And I keep going. So I'm good with that, man. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. This is a comfortable place for me. So what do you teach your guys in the locker room? Who are, who are it's about this? us. It's not about them. It's about us. Um, everywhere we go, even in your darn families, you're going to have detractors, you're going to have naysayers, you're going to have doubters, even in your darn family. And you guys are all shaking my head, shaking your head like, yeah, yeah, my aunt, she ain't no good. <laughs> <laughs> my sister ain't, she's in right now. You, you don't tell the truth. That's because it's going to be like that. God would always allow somebody to be in your path that, that have a disdain or dislike for you. It's up to you to keep going. I don't stop. I keep going. I don't have stop in me. Not whatsoever. Thank you, sir. Great question. Thanks, Coach. I think we're good today. Let's see, we got one more. We got one more. I'm feeling good. Who wants it? Who wants it? Um, Billy Barber from Monarch High School, No High Media. Monarch High School? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> that is me. Um, how has the atmosphere been changing, especially since the Oregon, the Oregon game, that you guys were on that high, 3-0? How is the atmosphere? Has the atmosphere We're still on a high. On we're, we're, we're still on a high. We're not on a seesaw. Yeah, we, we, we don't go up with the weight coming down. We don't do that. We rock steady, baby. We, we, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you baby. I don't want to be vilified by calling a woman baby in this climate, okay? Ma'am, ma'am, uh, we're still on a natural high. We're still working our butts off to achieve perfection. We're still loving what we do and doing what we love. We're still who we are. And things just happen in life, but we can't stop. We got to continue to focus and go forward and move expeditiously and still walk our path. I'm loving our kids, I'm loving our staff, I'm loving the community, I'm loving the support, the student body. I'm loving every bit of it, and I can't wait to see how they show up and show out. you got to understand, uh, David's got to have a go live. Yeah, if David don't have a go live, he don't get to use his stones. That was a good one. I'm in right there. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. I didn't get, I didn't, I didn't get, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got to, you do a great job. Uh, ABC announced 10 point. 10 million viewers for the Oregon game, most watched game this season, uh, second most watched regular season game in CU history. Um, we've now had 35 million viewers through four weeks, average of eight, almost nine million viewers per week. Um, defense, 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 offense, offense, offense. Uh, our chancellor, uh, Chancellor Phil DeStefano, right? Did, did I just... Did I not Stephano. say that right? Stephano. Stephano. I'm sorry. I didn't say Stefano. That's how I did it. Stefano. That's my guy, man. He did some wonderful things here, even uh, changing some things so a lot of our athletes could get in and then they proved themselves that they should have been in. But he is a wonderful human being, always greets me with a smile and a hug. Uh, he's going to be missed. I think he's going to continue his term isn't he? until the end. Through May, and then he's going to be part of the leadership program. Yeah, which is phenomenal but i uh, have much admiration much love but much respect and uh he's a legend to me because he embraced us with open arms and made it possible for us to do some of the things that we're doing and uh hats off and god bless him uh, he will be missed but i'm sure he's going to stay around in some capacity which is a good man we must applaud our good men and our good women while they're here and give them their roses while they can still smell them god bless you